Let's now look at some examples of parameterized surfaces. So our first example will be x equals r sine u cosine v, y equals r sine u sine v, and z equals r cosine u, where um, u goes from 0 to pi, and v goes from 0 to 2 pi. And here r is, r is a constant. So what's the surface? So our domain in the UV plane is where u is going from 0 to pi, so here's u equals pi, and v is going from 0 to 2 pi, this is not to scale, the height of this rectangle should be twice the width, and so here's the domain, this is rectangle in the UV plane, and this is getting mapped to what surface in three-dimensional space? Well, we can eliminate the parameters similarly to what we've done before with parameterized curves. So we want to use cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I look at x squared plus y squared, so both of x and y are multiples of r sine u, so I get r squared sine squared u times, and then cosine squared v plus sine squared v, which of course is 1. So we get r squared sine squared u. On the other hand, z squared equals r squared cosine squared u. So when I add these up, I get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared. And the surface is a sphere of radius r centered at the origin. In fact, we should have recognized this immediately because these are these are spherical coordinates. Right? So if you if you write say r equals rho and u equals phi and v equals theta, then these are just the equations for translating spherical coordinates into Cartesian coordinates. So we're fixing the radius r or rho and then we're letting u, u and v or phi and theta vary. Now are we getting the whole sphere? So, so if you eliminate the parameters you get an equation for the surface but then you have to think about where are the parameters to see if you're really getting the whole surface. So let's draw a picture here. But in fact, we are getting the whole surface because, um, I mean, these, these are the values of the spherical coordinates. These are all the possible values of the spherical coordinates, v and theta. So we could draw some lines in the domain and see where they go. So for example, if we look at lines where v is equal to a constant. So I'll draw some horizontal lines in the domain. So v is the polar coordinate theta, so that corresponds to lines where you're at the same longitude, so they look like this. And if we draw a couple on the back. So there's our, those are lines where, where um, v is equal to a constant. Then if we want to draw lines where u is a constant, so we draw some vertical lines here, and u is the latitude, so those lines look like this. Okay, so that's the sphere. Now, what if we changed the uh, change the example slightly? So, so if we have the same equations, except uh, we have u going from 0 to pi over 2 instead of u going from 0 to pi. Well, 
what surface is that going to be? Well, you can still eliminate the parameters. You're still going to get the equation for a sphere of radius r. But now, because we've restricted the parameter to this, um, to this range, we're not going to get the whole surface. So if we do it this way, then what we get is just the upper hemisphere, where z is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so you have to pay attention not just to what's the equation of the surface, but also to what are the possible values of the parameters, and are you covering the whole surface or not. All right, let's do another example. So example, so let's say x equals u cosine v, y equals u sine v, and z equals u. Um, what's the surface? Now, if I don't tell you what the range of the parameters is, then the default is that the parameters can be any real numbers, or any real numbers for which these equations are defined. Okay, so let's eliminate parameters to find the surface. So it looks like I can use cosine squared plus v squared equals 1. So if I write x squared plus y squared is u squared cosine squared v plus u squared sine squared v, which is u squared. Now u squared is just z squared, right? So z squared equals u squared. So that tells me that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And we recognize this as the equation of a cone. Let's draw the picture. Now, are we going to get the whole cone? Well, let's, let's think about the parameter space and think about what's happening. So z is u. Okay, so if you fix the value of u, let's make this a blue line. So this is where u is fixed, and v is varying. So z is always equal to u, but v, well, you know, you know, x and y are u times cosine v comma sine v. So as v goes up by 2 pi, you go all the way around the circle. If we draw another one over here, we're going to get a circle down here. So in fact, if we allow u and v to vary over all of the real numbers, we're going to cover the cone infinitely many times. If we wanted to only cover the cone once, we could say that u could be any real number and v has to go from 0 to 2 pi, for example. Um, so if we, look at, if we look at lines where v is fixed, so those correspond to um, lines like this on the cone. Okay. All right, so that's that example. Now let's do one more example where we don't know the parameterization, but we're given the surface and we want to find the parameterization. So our example will be to parameterize the surface of revolution of the graph y equals f of x, where x goes from a to b around the x-axis. So let's draw this. So we start with the xy plane, and we have the graph y equals f of x, going from x equals a to x equals b. And now we add a third dimension, the z-axis, and we rotate the surface around the z-axis. Okay, so how can I find a parameterization of this surface? So I need two parameters. What are they going to be? Well, we could use x as one of the parameters. So we could say x equals u. So that's, that's x. And then what about y and z? What are they in terms of u and v? So 
let's think about what's going on. So for a fixed u, we have a circle in the plane x equals u centered at the origin with radius f of x. Right, so it's, the circle looks like, like this. Okay, so that means the y and z coordinates, I mean, we've, we already know x is equal to u, and the y and z coordinates um, are going to give us a circle like this. So the radius is the radius is f of f of x. Okay, so how can we write a circle like that? Well, we can write y equals f of x times cosine u. Except I want to write everything in terms of u and v. So we're really going to write. So I'm going to think of f of x as f of u, and I'll write y equals f of u cosine v, and z equals f of u sine v. And then as v goes from 0 to 2 pi, we will go around the circle that we want. Okay, and then what should the domain be? If we want to cover the surface exactly once, well, x goes from a to b, and x is equal to u, so that tells us that u goes from a to b. And v is this angular coordinate, and to go around the circle once, v should go at an interval of length 2 pi. So we could perfectly well take the interval, interval from 0 to 2 pi. So v goes from 0 to 2 pi. So this is a parameterization of that surface. So the domain in the uv plane is a rectangle where u is going from a to b and v is going from 0 to 2 pi. So our domain is this rectangle and curves where u is fixed, so these would be vertical lines in this rectangle, get mapped to these circles in the surface of revolution. While horizontal lines in the domain get mapped to copies of the graph. Um, but they'll be rotated around the surface. Like that, okay? So that's a parameterization of the surface.